All right, let's go ahead and start. We got a couple uh, students out, but it's 10 after, so we got to get going. Um, we got another, we picked up another Colin. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, <clears throat> so I wanted to uh, first congratulate a few of you who got your assignments in super early. And uh, I didn't want to advertise this, but I, I like to, uh, I like to reward rather than to penalize. And those of you who have your stuff in, got it? Yep. All right, how'd you do it? Uh, okay, so I go to menu, there's this, I need to enable this. So the like fourth this. red camera box? <laughs> yep. Okay. And then you cycle through info. Yep. And there you go. All so right. I'll just do that for all the cameras. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Ah, we finally have our ladies. These are, the, uh, yeah. Uh, anybody that has a, a problem getting here on time, just let me know what's going on. These guys have something to, like right after they're finishing a class. Not a problem. Uh, anybody has those kind of requirements, just let me know. All right, let's settle in, ladies. Anyway, so like I was saying, I will, uh, you will find, uh, I will definitely try and start rewarding those of you who, who make your deadlines a pertinent part of your efforts. And to prove that, uh, I, I, does anybody even read my comments? Anyone? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. I get emails when you write comments. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah if you follow them. them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got if, if you guys follow the blog, it's like whenever you open it up, not signed in, it'll ask you to follow it. And it will give you updates on when students put their uh, uh, stuff up. Do that, because then when they do, you can just immediately, when you get that email, you can just go and comment, right? And you have your participation taken care of. All right, so when you when you open up NMD 341, the, the home page, uh, that is a requirement for those of you who um, are new and have questions about it. Uh, that's what this class is all about. We're going to be helping each other, critiquing each other. Um, there's more information that you guys have available to you than I have available to you. So we're going to be uh, pooling our resources as a whole, as a unit. And critique is a very, very big part of this class. So, uh, and to to forward that, I I gave how many people did I comment on and said you guys have five five extra points. How many did I say that? Uh, we have we have three semester projects throughout the term this this uh, semester, and among them you're graded on a rubric. The rubric, by the way, for uh, Connor's benefit, is right on the syllabus link on our website, on the top, all the way over to the right. This guy right up. Where's my mom? That guy right there. Rubric's at the bottom of that. Uh, some of you guys might fall short on some stuff. And if you have those extra five points, boom, you're right back up on top of your game, right? So. I uh, wanted to reward some of the people that got their stuff. Some, some of them got in like uh, 9.30, the night of class, which is awesome. So, um, all right. The way we normally go through our classes, uh, we start out by uh, critiquing the assignment from before and finding out whether or not those were successful images. Uh, I'm finding that I, I, I started out with a sh smaller class than what I have now, so it would have been a shorter process. We, we just can't get to everybody, but we will do as much as possible. And um, what we've started doing is sketching our photos before we get them. Why would we do that? Uh, it's to get the brain float flowing, it's to get the juices flowing rather than <laughs> keep your brain from flowing, that's not a good idea. But uh, keep the ideas and the juices flowing and, and picturing your image before it's made. Uh, Thinking of your subject in different angles, avenues, ways, uh, becoming uh, familiar with your subject. The more familiar you are with your subject, the more apparent it is that you have, or, or there, there will be a relationship developed between the subject and your camera. 
what the hell is a relationship between a camera and a subject? They're probably two inanimate objects, right? I mean, like a camera and a candle. What's the relationship between a candle and a camera? As we see here. This particular relationship is very intimate, right? It's very close. Start out a little farther away, and we got our sketches right here. And the goal for this image is accompanying each of the assignments. All right? So writing out our goals is going to be crucial. Sketching what we want to see, and then going and implementing those, the, the goals that we have for our shot. Got some, got some interesting shading work here going. She actually got pretty in-depth here. Look at all this. She got the thing, like, melting. Nice, huh? And then what does she do? She literally got the exact same kind of like cowboy hat brim flip here. This thing. I was worried you weren't going to be able to see what I was actually sketching. Looks good, right? We're going to start breaking down our images. Now this one, uh, we've uh, recently gone over some rules of thirds. Like, as in, we, we draw a, a tic-tac-toe square on, on our, an imaginary tic-tac-toe, two cross lines on the frame itself, this way and this way, and we, what we've been trying to do is put something in the bottom third. In this case, it's the bottom left. You can put it at the top right, top left, bottom right, right? But in this case, what, what we did was we, we put this here. We've also been working on lead lines uh, to accentuate the subject. The lead lines are not the subject in what we're doing. The subject needs to be accentuated by the lead lines. Ooh, which corner are you? This that one's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I kind of messed up. I just realized that's why I'm a little late. So I was looking at the pictures and realized I have the other ones on my phone, but I didn't post them. This is sweet. Well, so I just have that one. I have like, like all the different angles and stuff, but I just, for whatever reason, thought we were just doing the final. Uh, yeah, final you post. failed. Yeah, totally. so, sorry about that. Just, you should probably get the hell out. This is pretty awesome, right? Where, does it, where do your eyes start and where do they end on this one? It does. That's precisely what it does. It starts right here in this big white space. Why do the eyes go to white spaces first? It's bright. Our eyes, since we were little goo crawling out of a pond, right? have been picking up light. We don't look for dark, do we? Where do bugs fly in the middle of the night? Towards the night. When you die, where do you go? Toward the night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we, we start on this guy, and, and the, the cues themselves bring us right into an out of focus, but still no, no less unimportant subject at the top of this one. The, the composition isn't necessarily thirds, okay? You got one, uh, you got the ball laying squarely on the bottom third division of the, of the vertical frame, frame division here. Nothing on here except for this line bringing you in up here. And this is completely uh, aesthetically funky, but it still works, right? It does not follow the rules, but it still works. Very much so, right? Who thinks that does not work? See there? You're okay. Nailed it. Uh, I don't see goals, though. Do you have your goals somewhere else? Underneath. Okay. Yeah, All right. Somewhere Good enough. <clears throat> Did you have any sketches of it, too? Uh, yeah, they're, they're back at my place. All right. You got to get those online because I can't Sorry, grade. I will, for sure. Yeah, none of us know how to if, if it's successful or not because we don't know where you're starting from. This is pretty good. What kind of relationship do we, do we see developing here? Intimate. Very intimate. We got hands. We even got motion here, this little blur on the thumb. Even if it's just out of focus, it looks like there's motion there, right? So there's a, an act of doing something. In this one, the writing kind of goes way up here, right? Is that an important part of the shot? Probably. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But there's a blown out area here which brings your eyes right to it, right? So what if, uh, and I didn't see who it is. What if Riley did not want to emphasize sentence? What, what would he do? If this bright area is emphasizing a sentence, what would he do with the bright area? 
he wanted to emphasize it or did he what if he what if he, what if he wanted to for instance emphasize the pen only <clears throat> the words on the sheet mm. put the words in the darker area the answer what I'm looking for is to move the light he's in control of the light you were using your little it's phone light right I had a like a pen lamp okay uh, yeah he could just move the light right or if he if he really wanted to to get super crazy artsy and look right down, like right on the deck with the camera looking maybe behind the perspective of the hand as it comes to the pen, you'll have the shadow coming up and the pen coming down and meeting at a point right at the, I don't know, top left confluence of lines, right? That would be an extension of this shot, be very much, very, very much uh, a success on that same line. And again, nothing wrong with emphasizing the sentence there. Intentional or not, it does a good job, right? Because the other shot is just the pen, and then the one below it is a little bit more focused on the hand. You've got some bright areas here, contrasted by the dark. Not a whole lot dividing the frame, but we do have some lead lines bringing your focus right here, making a triangle. And in nature, we, we don't always see uh, triangles square geometric shapes in general. We don't see those uh, consciously. We see those subconsciously. But if you think about it, where do you look at a triangle? Do you look at the center or do you look at the points? points. You look at the points because you're being brought down to a point. It's literally called a point in geometric <coughs> terms, right? <coughs> That's a way to, to begin thinking. And how do we, how do we begin to think Photographically, um, <clears throat> good. What's this? That's a candle. Oh. Is it in a? It's it yeah. in something that's casting these? Cool. Yeah. yeah. He's got very subtle uh, lead lines here as well, right? He's got this line, which forms. A, it starts at about the top third. I'm, I'm talking pretty fast. Does everybody know? I know I covered it pretty quick last time. Does everybody get the idea of thirds dividing a frame? If you're shooting, I wish I could write on this wall instead of moving my camera. I'll just lift up the board. It takes a lot. Yeah, I'm going to just find a, a JPEG to drop in the video. One third, two thirds, three thirds, the whole image, right? And this is a, what is it, what do we call it when it's, when it's up and down like this? Portrait. Portrait. All right? This, this is a, these are connecting points. And this is your tic-tac-toe box. All right? Everybody needs to mentally be drawing a tic-tac-toe box when you're looking through a frame. Most cameras, um, dare I say, all that are, are, are interchangeable lenses will give you an option to put that grid on there for you. Some of them even have more complex grids, uh, depending on how you, you want to just take it and look at it. But then we have uh, lead lines putting a subject X at one of those con uh, uh, connecting points. Uh, that's, what, that's the kind of composition that I'm talking about. And if it's a shot like this, what is it? What's it called? Landscape. Landscape. All right. And we had a, we had a couple people miss a little bit of class and a couple people that are new, so I just want to make sure I'm covering that, and not going too quick. But everybody does get that concept. If anybody wants me to keep going over it, I will. It's not going to bug me at all. I want everybody to make sure. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody is, is getting the concepts if I speak too quickly. Because I get, I get, you know, totally crazy, start talking too fast. All right. Physics problems on the paper. Yeah, yeah we, he's, he's the uh, microbiologist among us. Yeah. The fungus among us. All right, we got Mao's goals. I really like Mao's shot. Did anybody see Mao's? Shots with the book folded over with the light behind it. Yeah? Everybody should be saying yes and say, oh yeah, I totally went on and checked out our website and commented on stuff. 
I really want you guys to start doing that. I don't want to give you like a start date, say, okay, I'm grading you now, right? I want everybody to go on and start commenting on our stuff, right? Which also means it has to be up there to comment on, right? Deadlines, people. Deadlines. No photographic job in history has, has, has been free from deadlines. All right. Okay, so she got some basic drawings here. Uh, one is looking down a book. One is looking down at a book, presumably. Yes, ma'am? Yeah. One is just the book flat, closed, uh, kind of like a, uh, an upper third perspective here. And then one is looking straight down uh, over folded or over inlaced pages. And then what she did, based on those drawings, is this. What kind of light source did you have there? A what kind? It was a disc. Yeah. Oh, okay. You just moved it around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did anybody? Did anybody actually care if it was a desk lamp? No, because it's really it's a beautiful way to light up a book, right? Mm -hmm. I don't uh, I don't expect anybody in here to go out and spend four hundred dollars on a on an re you know temperature ready Kelvin scale light or anything. I just I want you guys to start thinking about this. Yeah. Actually. Lighting too. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll actually break out the stuff. I've got some stuff on order uh, to, to really get into lighting. And we'll, we'll shoot, we'll, we'll do bounce cards, we'll light the bottom, we'll, we'll do umbrella lighting, we'll do three-point lighting. Uh, but in any case, uh, this one I thought was very effective. Who? Uh, first of all, uh, let's, let's go one, two, three, four, and five. Who likes one the best? Two. A lot of people on that one. Three, it's okay to like more than one. Four, okay, and five. So this one, this one, few, and then and then a lot of people like this one as well, right? So uh, we don't know her goals, but aesthetically, looking at this based on competition and uh, composition and lead lines that we've been talking about lately, this is as the class votes, the least effective one. Uh, I would wager a bet that when everybody put their hands up, just on my visual count, this one was the most effective, and then this one would probably be second place. Does anybody disagree with that? Right. Why? Why are these effective? I want to open these in, new, in a new window. Are they going to open up big for me? Wow, right? Really digest that. She's my student. <laughs> uh, kind of, what does it remind you of? A heart, right? Everybody, if, if, even on a subtle level, can relate to that particular shape in here. Ever since we were itty bitty little toddlies, we have been drip fed this image of a heart. Is that what a heart looks like in reality? Absolutely not. But that's what Valentine's Day is all about, that, that shape right there. And everybody knows it. Everybody can relate to it. And that's the most predominant shape in the shot. Intentional or not, again, it's just as effective, right? Let's go to... Good. Oh, you got, you got the... Uh, what stands out on that one? First your eyes see what? This, and then the brush, right? What emerges from this, on, on the, the second thing that emerges is right here. That's a very strange transi transition for the eyes to make, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To go up and then to stop, and then to come here with it. But it works, doesn't it? Your eyes are gonna, are gonna start here where it's light, right? And they're gonna examine this, this uh, panel of the pane. And then the panel, if you guys can't see it, uh, the, the frame itself stopped here. So she's dividing it into a third. Its first third starts here. And then you've got two thirds here where she stopped uh, framing it just outside that brush. Right? So that's why that brush fills that space more because she's divided it this way also. But we, we, we have that image inside an image feeling to it. Very effective. Very nice. 
And this one, why is this one effective? Yeah, it, it, it has bright to dark right there in front of you. And she didn't even do anything high tech with that. Right? I can tell that that's, if she did edit it, there's not much to it. She didn't spend a whole lot of editing time on that. And that's, well, that's not what I, I don't want you guys to spend all your time in the editing bay. I want you guys to picture the shot that you want before you take it. And then I want you to, as closely as possible, have that picture in your camera uh, when you leave, as close as possible. Right? And what we have here is, now think about what a histogram would look like with this area right here. What would, what would this area look like on the histogram? Spike on the right. Spike, but what kind of, what kind of spike? So I'm going to give you a, a specific. I'm going to test you guys a little bit. What would that spike look like? How far up to the top of the grid, to the top of the table would it be? What? The, all the way? It, it, yeah. It would. It would be not only all the way, it would be above it. Yeah. Because we've lost information here. This used to be a defined line and then boop, it's gone. Is it wrong? Not necessarily. It's just going to be at the very top. Right? If the histogram went higher, then we would have this information on it. But since it's gone, since we can't see it, what is the term that we use for that? Starts with a B? Two words? Second word starts with an O. Blown out. Blown out. Right? That, that is blown out of the visual range for a histogram to, to, to observe that, that information. Right? That line has disappeared. Is it effective? Absolutely. Because what happens right over here? What happens on the opposite end of that picture? Almost the same thing, right? We still see it. So, it'll, it'll, so where will that be on the histogram? Will that be below, or will it be like just above the bottom? It'll be just above, because we, we can just about not see it, but we can, right? We can, we can see that. There's a defined line. So the darkest part of the image is correctly exposed. The lightest part is not. How, how could we change that? Let's put ourselves at Mal's desk at home. What can we do to change that? There's like plenty of things that we can do. It's my floor. Okay. We've got a hardwood floor? Like mahogany. Yes. We've, we found our rich student. <laughs> so, what can we do? I mean, like, change the lighting. You, okay, let's talk about the lighting. The light itself. What can we do to it? We can move where it is. Maybe it's more light, I guess. You can move it away? You could add more on the other side, I guess, to contrast it, I guess, is what you're saying? Top down, maybe. Yeah? What, what could you maybe, you could probably what? Put something over it. Maybe like take a, what do you call those things that what girls said? Nylons. Uh, Nylons, yeah. You can stretch one of those over, right? And diffuse that light a little bit, break it up. What else? You could bounce the light. You could bounce it. You could. Have, you know, it's a great idea. I didn't think about that. You, it looks like the light is like here and then coming down, right? <laughs> and what you could do is have the light coming here and then put something over here to bounce it into it, right? What else? What else? Come on. Think about the camera. We talked about the light. Now let's think, think about the camera. You mean like high rise, so low rise? So. Uh, yes, the settings. What, what could she adjust on there to, ha to make a better uh, image? I don't know what her settings are. In fact, let me see if I can't steal that. It's a JPEG or No, so you can um, down there. Say, um, oh, you got the settings on here? It does it automatically. Wait, no. It's during in, on the slideshow. I don't know if it's showing up on your computer, but on my. Oh, she's got spittiness involved with her, but the likes of which I have no idea. So she's got. Mm -hmm. 
one twenty-ninth of a second or a thirtieth of a second at thirty-five mils in the F twenty-two. That's a that's a huge aperture. Means she has very very little light coming in. And did you have a, it? It had to have been set on a tripod, right? No, I was just on my floor, like laying down. When you hand held it, you held but, it with your hands and. No, I put it on the floor. Oh, okay. oh that one? No, that one I was holding it like from above. Yeah. But uh, okay. some of them I was holding. Yeah, I'm very surprised that you got lines that solid at a thirtieth of a second. Very, very surprised that you got that without mounting it to something or, or leaning it up, up against something with that shot. Thirtieth of a second is a long shutter speed. It's almost like a lag. But um, so, what was your ISO on this one? No, it was uh, three sixty-five. Three six hundred. Yeah. Oh, 3600. 3600. I've seen that before. It's interesting. All right. Yeah, um, it's made it really dark. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You're, you're, um, let's change it and make it better. How can we do that? Everybody remember those numbers? 30th of a second, F22, at basically a 4000 ISO. What do we change to make that look better? I would start with the shutter speed, yes. I would not feel comfortable taking a second shot at 30th of a second. I would probably at least bring that up to 80th. Considering the, the lack of light around it, uh, that, and that might be a, a participle of, that might be evidenced by the, the F22, right? Having a tiny little pinhole through which to gather the light to the sensor. What else? Reduce the ISO. Yeah, that's going to re reducing the ISO from four thousand. That's a pretty high ISO. Is going to do what to, to benefit the image? Make it less green. Less, less what? Less green. Yeah, it's going to make it a little cleaner. You see this little digital noise right here? That should be a nice, smooth gradient from this light to that dark. Everybody get that? And it's kind of chunky. Needs to lose some weight. If we put a lower ISO on there, it'll clean that right up. But if you lower the ISO, you got to do something else, right? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So so let's keep the let's keep the, let's just say that the thirtieth of the second is the only thing that you can lock that that you got to lock that down, right? If we drop the ISO to maybe what a thousand, that's how many stops? It is. It's two stops. One thousand to two thousand, two thousand to four thousand, right? That's two stops. So from an F twenty two, you got to go where? You got to go if yeah if you're going if you're going down to. You have to stop up to. Who's got it in their notes? Somebody took notes during this, right? Don't guess. Give me a number. Give me your number, girl. Girl. I need to learn to eat before this class. <laughs> That's a good idea. Ah, 22 versus 16. Okay, and that, is that one stop? Yes. Okay, so what's the next stop? 11, then 8, 5, 6, 4, and then 2, 8. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say that from F22 it goes to 16. Uh, and then from 16 it goes to 11. We'll say that's two full stops. Right? Now we have the exact same image with less grain. Mathematically speaking, and in theory, this is going to be the exact same shot. Because if we, if we drop two uh, stops in ISO, we add two stops up in, in, F, in the aperture. Okay, mathematically it's going to come out the same way. You might have a slight variation, but basically that's what's going to be. So, 
Now we still have this problem right here. If we want to define that line, now that we have correctly moved two stops, up one, down another, what do we do about that to define that line a little more? What do you think? No idea. These are these. You could. What would what would increasing the shutter speed do? Make it darker. Yeah, it would let in less light. Exactly. And and and. Um, so letting in less light. Right here is also going to bring in less light here. So we're going to we're going to have a little bit of loss here. So let's consider maybe one stop. Right, not two full stops to come to come up with the aperture. Right, we've already adjusted the aperture. Uh, maybe a, a, another another consideration might be made for defining that line, but still maintaining this line down here. Right, uh, <clears throat> and certainly we're not limited to just that. Okay, we're just talking about the camera stuff, but we can bring a piece of paper right over here. Just hold it. Stop the aperture down. Open that up a little bit, which is going to do what to your depth of field? Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna shrink your depth of field. The closer you get to two eight, the shorter your depth of field is. Who doesn't understand depth of field? Anybody else? We got we got I know there's a few of you in here. I don't know. Let's uh, let's talk about depth of field for a second. On and I am going to raise. The screen for this one. I do want to get this. I want to talk about this. <laughs> Fine. Don't do what I want you to do. <laughs> See if I care. That sounds pretty ominous, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like you're waiting for something. To it's the guillotine is being loaded up. <laughs> all right, uh, and let's. All right, uh, can Tristan, can you hit the the light for me? Kind sir, thank you very much. Yes, please and thank you. Oh, cool. here we go. All right, crap. What was I? What was I talking about? Uh, yes. All right. Here's your frame at an F22. All right, and let's say we are looking down at a row of very shabbily drawn trees. All right, at an F22, you're going to have a very what they call wide depth of field. And by wide, I'm actually talking about distance in this case. If I say wide aperture, that's not really referring to distance. But when we talk about E O F depth of field, we are actually talking about a measure of real distance looking down the plane of your shot. All right? So just for our purposes, based on the other settings in the camera, we're going to say that your depth of field is going to be right here. Mm -hmm. Alright? And that's going to be, I don't know, 15 yards, say. Alright? It's probably going to be more than that, but it really depends on what you're actually shooting at. You're shooting like a plane in the sky, you got plenty of light, there's no reason not to be at an F-22, right? Because you can get it, you can get the clouds behind it, you can get the bird that's right about to hit the engine and turn into mucus out the back. <laughs> right? And now, let's go way down to an F-2.8. Or way up, as the case actually is, right? <clears throat> And F22 inside, you're looking down into the lens, and F22 looks about like that. You're looking down into the lens on an F28, it looks about like that. Why, Connor, on the spot, would that be the case if it's a bigger number here and a smaller number here? Um, um, 
there is a measure of distance right here. Uh, okay. It's like 22 millimeters versus... Something like that. Yeah. That's basically it. All right, that's how we should think about it. We shouldn't think about it in terms of what this distance is. We should be talking about the, the, the measure of that distance there, which is now, yeah, it makes perfect sense that that number is smaller, right? Everybody got that, yeah? All right, so we got all of this light coming in the lens. Let's look at the same scene. Now, we're looking at trees that are much less defined and still chantilly drawn, <laughs> right? Now our depth of field is going to be much shallower. That's what I'm talking about when, when I'm talking about depth of field, all right? I don't think I've really put that out formally. I talked about it last class, but this is the concept that, that, that you guys should, should be thinking whenever I say depth of field, whenever anybody uses depth of field in their shots. Because like the, la the, the first shot that we talked about for Mouse was what? She had the, uh, the coffee cup, right? Right there at the bottom right. It was in focus, and then like the rest of the kitchen was kind of out of focus, right? So she obviously uses depth of field to introduce the more important of the several subjects within her, within her work, right? Everything, everything that she's done so far, the book that's open that has the brush and then the, the dividing line and then the pages folded over, it's a simple image but it's very complex. So she has more subject matter in her shots. How does she differentiate, which is what most important, depth of view? Which is exactly what you guys should be doing as well. I mean, as, as, as um, developing photographers, I mean, I'm not saying, do it or you fail. I'm just saying, um, look for it, right? All right, any questions on that? All right, screen down. Let there be lightless room. Did somebody hit the lights on again? I don't think it works on it. Her, her, and so is, is it, this is the one that is to. Yeah. I just want to be able to hit it quick. And on. Boom! You guys really don't deserve a light over here. Did it, did it flicker? Yeah, it did. Jiggle the handle. That's what happens when I, my toilet doesn't flush. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Jiggle it. Yeah, it was flickering earlier. Let me throw something at it. <laughs> All right, well, wiggling it ain't going to happen, so <laughs> you guys are just going to be lightless for a little while. Okay, let's move forward. Great stuff, right? We'll have to look at her goals. Uh, as, as individuals, right? Go on and comment on her photos and her goals. Um, <clears throat> I don't want everybody to feel like they have to comment on everybody's stuff, okay? That's not, that's not my, that's, my objective isn't to be like, okay, you guys have inundated the page, and now it's huge, and everybody has something to say. I want you guys to, to think about quality, not quantity. Quantitative information on this page is gonna do it no justice whatsoever. It's gonna make it long and nobody's gonna to wanna to actually read it. All right, I want you to go in, find a shot that moves you, two, three, okay? And leave constructive criticism on it. I like this shot is not constructive criticism, right? If, if you're commenting on it, it probably is because you like it, right? Don't start getting offensive and don't start getting offended but, you know, put yourself where they are, behind that lens, and comment appropriately. Comment, um, uh, you know what I mean. I don't, need to, I don't have to go down that road, I guess. <clears throat> All right, these were their under and over exposed, right? I've gone beyond that then. All right. Good perspective here. Let's look at these. Whose is this? Uh. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we got an iPod, or at least an 
iPhone with ear, earbuds in it. Um, Catherine is moved by religion, right? Religion and music, clearly. So she's uh, jamming out to Lady Gaga as she's uh, flipping through the Hebrew texts of the Old Testament. All right, what did she use here? Lead lines, where do, you, where do your eyes start? Where do they go? Then where? The words lead up to the... There's a lot that leads up there, isn't there? Yeah. Let's dissect it. Dissect this. I'm, I'm going to stop talking. I, I feel like I talk too much. It's your, your turn. It's your class. I already know the texts. Like, how it points towards the phone. The point... The, the text points up. We not only have this right here bringing your eyes up, but we have these angles here keeping your eyes in the center, right? As we would be doing if we were looking down the lines of a road, or a river, or anything else that, that gets smaller with distance, right? What else? The book and the iPhone take up the bottom two thirds of the photo. They do like... They do, don't they? Much more so she has defined the top third of the frame right here, right? I like that the book and the phone and the headphones are they like make kind of a triangle for your eyes to follow, so you can just keep going in circles around the picture. Yeah, I go the other way, but I mean, yeah, that works. <laughs> that way's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why my triangle goes in the opposite direction. She found a triangle, so you guys are now looking geometrically, right? pretty awesome. We even have an actual triangle right here. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Straight lines almost the whole way. Right? But on the opposite side, that's also the triangle. No, no, not that one. Okay. Yeah, pointing out. Okay. No. Yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff influences you to take a picture at a certain place at a certain time that you might not, not even know about, right? Connor pointed out that it's divided two thirds here. Obviously, this is the most important chunk of the picture. There's information up here, but it's not important to the, to the main, the draw of that of the picture, right? What draws you in? What is this, chairs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? And then end of the table here? Yeah. Does your house smell of rich mahogany? <laughs> you and Mao with the with the wax on, wax off. <laughs> um, what else can we say about it? You just, you just want to stop right here, don't you? You go up and then you're like, the picture is like, yeah, stay there. All right. So it's a way that the photographer controls the viewer. You see what the photographer wants you to see. And interestingly enough, that, to, to, I mean, it very much plays God, does it not? Right? No, no small coincidence that it's a Bible sitting there. Now this one, uh, I'm just going to stop talking. You guys talk about this picture. I want this table to talk about this picture. Get off your Facebook, talk about this picture. <laughs> I pick on people with laptops that are open and you know, you're, you're actually, actually have, you should have your laptops open. No, you should have your laptops open. I'm just messing with you. Go ahead. What do you guys think about this? Uh, I'm going to say my focus is probably drawn to the headphones right in the front and then it follows each wire up to kind of like Cluster in the back, and you can really tell what's going on back there. You can't tell if it's, I'm assuming that's the vibe in the background, but you can't really tell what it is. Right. It's because it's, it's pre designed by the previous image, right? If this just stood alone, you would know what it is. So. But uh, the main focus is just right on the two headphones in the front, and the wires immediately go blurry. Yep. And what, what is that called? Let's start talking technically. Oh, that is called. 
It is. It's a shallow depth of field. You can even pick up. You can actually see that the focus starts right here in the table, and it ends right there. You see that? You've got you've got very clear grain on the, the grains of the table, not the digital grain of the digital image. I'm saying. You've got. You can literally see that that plane of focus right here. Very very clear. Right. That is the depth of, of the field in focus. And everything else prior and post, before and after, that, that part of the plane is that focus. Uh, you got it. What else? Well, What's that? Just talk. See if, see if, see if any of the, um, the dialogue that uh, we're using. Oh, um, okay. Get off the picture. Oh, yeah, the, the fact that that's where the focus got from, I mean, I, I think it does a disservice. But I think the white, there's more focus on some of the white. I think it was less blurry, a little bit. Oh, be better. I don't know. That shower smiles. <laughs> it's okay to say that, it, that it's, it's difficult to look at, isn't it? It's like pretty, there's, I mean, I like the contrast in colors. Yeah. What? That has very clear like foreground, middle ground, background. Because like with the front, it's super clear, and then the middle, you're kind of like, yeah, whatever that is, and then the back, you can't even tell what it is. Yeah. When I was looking at this last night, this was actually one of my favorite pictures that was posted for the assignment because I think, like, I think lead lines are definitely important, but I also think like straight cut lead lines in every single photo is not interesting, and I found that this was a lot more interesting to look at than a lot of. Not even for this assignment, just in general, like photography. Like I think it's like I think it's a lot more contrast, and I think like it, if it hurts your eyes, like good, it makes you think that it hurts your eyes. You know what I mean? It makes you talk about it. So I like that. I really like the reflection of the table. And I think that adds something else. It's It gives it placement, doesn't it? There's also no. It's also no small coincidence that it, the, the the shadow here is in focus and the shadow here is out of focus. However, this part of the this part of the, the earbud itself is in focus, and somehow this managed to be out of focus. That isn't a conscious thing. To the regular, like just anybody flipping through a magazine is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Don't know why. Next page, right? That's why. That is that is that is a juxtaposed thing, and, and it, it, just because you don't notice it at first doesn't mean that it's not powerful. Okay. We literally have one picture, and let's just cut everything else out except for this. Let's crop this section out right here, and let's just talk about that. We have one picture that actually has two earbuds in it, but that it's still one, and one of them is out of focus. How is that possible? And there's, there's still visually, uh, and for all intents and purposes, geometrically, the same distance away from the lens, right? And so that tricks the eye. That actually does something on the subconscious level, and it doesn't fit somehow. Might be why it's uncomfortable for Brandon to look at. All right, and that's the sort of thing uh, aesthetically that that makes images successful. Okay, it's juxtap it's juxtaposition, and it's not. And it, it's not some $50,000 shot that Vogue paid uh, uh, a rich, you know, studio photographer to come in with his Hasselblad and snap away at, right? This, this took 15 minutes and it, it created exactly what it needed to create. All right? Good. All right. We're about, we're almost an hour in. So let's, let's take a break. Uh, and then we'll get into the rest of the <coughs> uh, About, say, 10 minutes. We'll start at 10 after. All right. I'm looking at you. Okay, I open this to segue into our, the rest of our discussion. But first, let's go with resources. All right. You guys should be checking the resources pretty much every day. Um, 
The reason being is that it will tell you exactly what we're going to talk about in each class. And I usually post this the night before, at least the day of. All right. So we reviewed and discussed our assignments. Uh, who got theirs in on time? Who is still struggling with deadlines? Uh, I want it all online at the time required. People that are not paying attention right now, I want you to pay attention right now. Note, if I left a comment on your assignment, it was in by 9.30 last night. The people that I commented on get a one-time bonus of five extra credit points for an assignment of your choosing in the future. Okay? Cool. I'm not going to say that now now everybody that gets their assignment on time gets extra credit. I'm just saying, if I am someday really impressed that people are on their game, I, I am known to be really happy in terms of handing out a bunch of points. All right? Just for your reference. All right. Let's talk about storage. We're, just, we're not going to go too deep into this. Most people of your generation are born knowing how to like move electronic information around. Okay, so we're just going to cover topically uh, what a photographer's bag should look like in the <clears throat> in the storage department. All right. Um, we got a recording. All right. <clears throat> what to use and how to use it. First of all, what do you guys think you use as far as storage goes for your cameras? There's several different things, so just throw stuff out. Like me. Uh, okay, well, the bag to store your camera in. <laughs> I don't know if that was a smart ass remark or what. <laughs> An SD card, a, a card in general, right? Not all cards have SD cards, but that's one of the more common ones. SD stands for what? Storage It stands for, it actually stands for scan disk, which is the company that invented that. Shape that specific size and shape of card. Scan disk. Scan disk. Yeah. SD. Uh, CF. What does CF stand for? It is. The company isn't that. I don't think it's the name, but I know that they invented the name, and it's compact flash. It's a big, fat one, and it renders information very, very quickly, much quicker than an SD card. When you get into like high resolution images, raw images, things like that, and like sports photography where you're like, you know, you've got like eight frame per second uh, on your digital servo and you've got, you know, all the, all the battery packs in there to make it go super fast and you're like snapping away. If you're catching your photography in raw, which you should be doing, by the way, you're going to need a card that can handle a fast processor to put that information on the card. Otherwise, it's going to go, Shoot a shot! I'm missing shots! I'm just gonna wait, 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 and then finally when the scene is done, it goes and then you're like, Fuck. right? You need, you need a card that does faster speed. So even on your SD cards, you're gonna see a number on there. Get the higher number that you can afford. Okay, I can explain the like, the, all of the technical aspects of it, but just get a high number. All right? The, Cards that are in that camera right there are considered to be 600 speed. And uh, that also, that's CF, it also in SD, I think, translates to 90 megabits per second. A bit is 8 bytes. Mathematically speaking, that means the number 90 megabits, mega meaning, what is it, million, right? 90 million bytes times 8. And that's the number of bytes that it's rendering every second onto that card. That's the technical stuff. There's all, there's all kinds of, there's several different mathematical ways to even figure all that out and, and all that. Just get a high number. Real easy to remember that one, right? There's also, um, I think if you have a Pentax, Pentax has their own proprietary brand of, of storage card. Um, in any case, if I say memory card, uh, if we're talking about a memory stick, we're talking about like a USB stick, right? Which is also okay to store your items on. Uh, but if I say memory card, or if I say CF card, or if I say SD card, right? Get your SD cards out. I want to I wanna double back this up, right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so, how do you organize what you shoot? Anybody? Could do it by date, chronologically, never hurts. Technically speaking, 
if your if your camera if you set the date and time on your camera it's already got that in its metadata correct yeah. the metadata of your shot will save all kinds of information among which the date is there so make sure your camera has the correct time on it right great point how else can you organize your vote Location. Nothing wrong with putting the location on there. Uh, you could just put your name on all of them, right? Maybe. Depends on, sometimes it depends on what kind of shooting you're doing, right? If you're like going to shoot a wedding, for instance, if, I, I use wedding photography as a really good example, as a very frequent example in here, because it's uh, very, it's, it's non-fiction photography. It's fast composition photography, and one of you in this class, maybe even several of you, might end up actually doing wedding photography. It's a very immediately applicable and relatable field uh, that I can reference in this class. And so I use that a lot as, as, that, as far as that goes. But if you're in, in that setting, if you're in a wedding, and you're just gonna, you probably snap about 1,000, 1,500 shots in over the course of a night, right? You might have 10 come out of that that you use, right? Preferably you have an entire book for somebody, but who knows? Depends on how many images and how many of those are actually usable. So, in that case, putting your name on them isn't probably the best idea. Putting the bride and groom, or putting um, wedding date photo number, right? Uh, Collins wedding, uh, spring 2014, right? And I'll show you how to rename all kinds of stuff uh, the easy way, right? We'll, we'll, we'll gather up some images and I'll show you guys a real quick way to name it. Name, uh, or or the, the correct uh, term is titling. Titling your images, saving them under a specific name. Um, but that's going to get into the details and I just want to keep this topical for now. Um, okay, how do you prepare and edit your work for display and or exhibition? You will be putting on an exhibition in here. Not the woo, not like, not that, but the uh, showing your work to others. In fact, we're already doing it, all right? Um, how do you prepare and edit your work for display? I don't, that's a redundant one. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but just to get the, just to get the pot stirred up, I want to, I want to throw that in there. Okay, transferring your content. Now, when I was overseas working for various clients I, I wish that I w could could just tell you okay well uh, it doesn't matter who you're talking to or what the client wants or anything like that there's always one way to do it <laughs> that's that that couldn't be any further from the truth than uh, something that's really far that I can't think of right now and it, and it's just really the it's the nature of the beast every client wants something different and all of them want it exactly that way. Whether they explain it to you or not, they expect you to know that way. There's, there's all kinds of interesting difficulties that come into dealing with various clients. Uh, there's FTP protocols. Does anybody know what an FTP transfer is? Yes. Does anybody know what they stand for? File transfer protocol. That's like, when I was in college, when I was shooting, I, I put myself through my undergrads, uh, working as a, a photographer for five different newspapers. And luckily, three of those newspapers worked on the same FTP. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been a giant process to get my stuff in. And we're not talking about big photos. That, that I've got a 36 megapixel image on each one of my frames that comes out of a, a, a raw processor. And to get that over an FTP today, I mean, it would be, I don't, I mean, you could do it, obviously, but. Um, we were dealing with like eight megapixel images back at back. You know, and, and, and they didn't even want anything higher than that because then it'd be like, their, their server wouldn't be able to handle it and all that other stuff. So um, then there's, there's things like, there's things like direct server upload where let's say we have a server. There's actually a server in the building I'm pretty sure we could have access to if you guys wanted to, to do something like this. And I might actually ask for, for uh, permission to do so. But there's a server. Um, we'll just, we'll put you in the newsroom. Everybody in here is a photographer, a stringer, as they say, uh, or a staffer. 
and uh, sent out on your job, you take a bunch of images, uh, what, what you're going to do is you, you have software loaded up on your computer, like FileZilla, for instance, right? And you have a logon and a password, just like you have for your email. And then you have a little box on the right and a little box on the left. And the box on the right is the server, all the information that's on a server. And then the box on the left is your computer, right? Uh, your, your folder, then you're just going to literally just highlight your photos and you're going to drop them right into the right folder. It's, it's the basic, basic interface. All right? And that's pretty much how it goes. We, you, guys, you guys have heard of it like uh, SoundCloud, right? Um, what's another couple of big ones? There's, there's iCloud, there's Dropbox. Who's dealt with Dropbox? Probably quite. I remember it. It's awesome. If you have any 25 days for Oh, right on. Yeah, they charge you a monthly thing. I love having... Who, who has their own website? It's pretty awesome. In your website, depending on who you... you, you there's like GoDaddy, there's like iPage, there's a whole bunch of very easily accessible web servers or hosts as they call them. Uh, and they give you like unlimited space, which is awesome. Because just as Thomas was pointing out, they charge you a fee every month for... This, this stuff, Dropbox, I think, just up to their ante to like one terabyte per user for like 20 bucks a month or something like that. I can't remember. It's awesome, though. A terabyte for 20 bucks a month. That is insurance, baby. That's money in the bank. That means like every one of your shots, you just throw them onto there, and your house could burn down, and you'd still never lose them, right? That is the security of, of a file transfer protocol. Okay, That is what you're using, even though you might not know it. You're coming from your command center through the interwebs across the sea and into somebody else's folder. That's basically, that's basically what it is. And you guys understand all that stuff anyway. You guys are born with iPods in your hands. Little maggots. I had to learn it the hard way. 1993. They had iPods in 1993, didn't they? Nope. I probably came out in 2002. That's probably about the time that your memory started anyway. No. And then you very quickly started dismantling that with the drugs. No argument there. <laughs> it's all fun and games that we start back. Like <laughs> when, when, did, when did the iPods come out? I think it was like 2001, 2002. Yeah. You know they're using those in like hackers clubs now to, to uh, set off... <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. They, uh, they, set, they set up all kinds of stuff. Uh, I, I wish I got more into that because it really is interesting what they do with like older technology and mixing it with new. Uh, so, moving on, the stuff that actually has to do with this class. Eight simple steps to organizing your photos. It really does boil down to eight. Okay, There's lots and lots of details to each one of these steps. Um, well, except for number one. <laughs> Except for the immediately the first one that contradicts me whenever I start this conversation. Uh, never delete anything on your card until it's backed up. Dot dot dot. What's that next word there? Twice. twice. I want everybody to say that. One two three. Twice. twice. Louder. Twice. How many times? Twice. twice. That's very very important. Don't ever delete anything from your card unless it's backed up to two separate drives, not two places on the same drive, two separate drives. It's not two separate drives. It is actually. That is perfectly acceptable. But Dropbox and another one. Computer. A computer, uh, preferably a, an actual dedicated external drive. That's that's the way to go. All right. If you if you just don't have it or can't afford it, etc., etc. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, things that get in the way. But on the job, as a photographer, the common practice is to back it up twice. Two separate drives. And I can't tell you how many times I've had a, 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 a drive fail on me. I've had, uh, I was just leaned up against something that was magnetic and like completely removed the images from one of my old, older style drives, right? I had that other drive in another bag, in another place, and I was still online. I would not have come away with my images, or and the, the memory that I have of that incident is actually on, I was uh, capturing uh, B-roll video for a stock. I would have lost all of that. I would have lost like five days worth of work 
Had I not had it on, this ever done? Very, very important. That's probably the most important of all the rules in the eight steps. Number two, keep the same organization on OneDrive as the redundant drive. What is a redundant drive? Identical copies of the same thing. Identical. Identical, they, they should definitely be identical. At least the final folder structure should be identical. What 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 is what's the essence of the word redundant though? Well, first of all, what does redundant mean? That means that like it isn't important, right? If like I have a twin and I'm smarter, that means he's redundant. <laughs> Why is he even taking up my, my food and my air? He's redundant. Right? Let's feed him to the fishes. Worthless. Useless. Bag them. Never. Redundant means, it doesn't actually mean useless in this case. It actually means very, very useful. It means, more, mo most importantly, that nothing else goes on this drive. Just the stuff for which you have been employed to capture you know, images, video, um, whatever, whatever the job calls for. The redundant drive is an immediate and exact copy. No difference, literally the exact copy. You don't want anything to be not exact on this thing, in fact, because if it is, that means you've got information in the redundant drive that you don't have here, and you're gonna be erasing the redundant drive, which means you're also gonna be erasing whatever else extra that's on there that you don't have on the first drive, right? Is anybody like, oh, sorry. Is anybody doing that right now? A couple of people are staring at me. It is, it's, it's a little bit tricky of a concept, but the point is you have two drives. Why do you have two drives? One is going to be sitting here and, and you're just going to, you're going to back up all your cards to it. Like as soon as you get done with the shoot, you're going to back your cards up to this drive. And then you're going to take this drive and you're going to put it over here and you're never going to mess with it at all. And then the other drive you're going to have here, and this is the one where you do your editing, where you, you do your, your, your plan for your exhibitions, you put your extra journals on, you put your extra notes and all that stuff. Well, this one does what? Nothing. At all. Nothing at all. Why would it do nothing at all? Because you want your originals. You want your originals to stay intact because with it, the minute you start editing stuff on these images, it starts compressing that image in a certain way on the drive. It changes the actual electronic structure, if you will, if that's an actual term, of the image itself. That original file is altered. You don't want to change that. You want its original unencumbered structure. Okay? And that's because right now you guys are juniors and seniors. Eventually you might be pros. You might even be pros soon. Who knows? You're going to look at the stuff you did back in college, and you're going to be like, that sucks. <laughs> but it, you, you might not say that about your, your, the images themselves. You might look at the originals and be like, dude, I caught that? That's awesome. I didn't think that looked so good then. But now that I know that I've got the photographer's eye and I've been doing this for years, I'm going to re-edit those original images, and they're going to be badass, right? <laughs> and that is why you don't touch the redundant drive. All right. More details on that one later. I'll confuse you thusly. All right. Number three, check both drives for any irregularities. And this, this immediately follows. Yeah, immediately follows. After you've backed it up, then check for irregularities. What does that mean, check for irregularities? Does that mean like... You know, like, what are we doing with that? Check for irregular. What does it mean? If one's modified more soon than like the other, I guess. Mm -hmm. the, the redundant drive is no, there's nothing changed, right? So what are we doing with the redundant drive? Why? Are, what are we checking for with regular? Open them up and make sure that like every so often one opens and it's a picture. Yes, for all intents and purposes, that's exactly what you're doing. You're just making sure it actually works. Case in point, 
when I was backing up my files one day, um, uh, the, I didn't have it plugged in and I thought my laptop was plugged in and it just went to sleep, right? Because the battery was getting low and I had to do other things. It went to sleep in the middle of backing up stuff, right? When I came back, I was like, oh yeah, my computer went to sleep. So let's wake it back up and it's just gonna keep doing as it's gonna do and da 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 da. And what happened during that time was as it went to sleep and it was back, it corrupted one of those files. And that's not the only thing that can happen to corrupt those files, right? There's myriad things that can take place while those files are being stored that can corrupt those files. And so, as Riley points out, <coughs> all you have to do, literally open them up, click one after another after another, as long as it opens up and it's the actual image in its original integrity, you're good. Golden, right? <clears throat> you want to make sure that the, the original copies are good. Now, what happens if it's not? What happens if you bumped your laptop or something and the drive was spinning and it kind of had a little twitchy brain fart or whatever and didn't, didn't do that? What then? It should be still on your SD card. It should still be on your SD card. Why? Because you never deleted anything on your card until it was backed up twice. twice. Boom. Right? Twice. And uh, what you can do then is I would probably just delete the whole, the whole folder. Right? It's going to take you, what, like half an hour of your life or something to back these things up twice, but you'll always know you've got them, right? Take the time, don't push through this process quickly. You spent a lot of time planning and executing these images. Why would you not spend quality time making sure that you actually got them, yes? Very important. Mistakes, uh, hopefully you will not make that I have made. All right, check both drives. View your images and name them accordingly. Very important not to put spaces in your, in your file names, all right? There's this little thing that happens when a space, first of all, um, <clears throat> the language of computers is called what? Who's, who's like a super nerd in here? It starts with an A. ASCII. ASCII. A-S-C-I-I is the language of computers, dating back to like just after the 50s, when they had like, when they, when they changed from like the big tape moving things and the computer took up a whole room, right? They put language of computers into a certain uh, translatable thing that like everything you do here, it gets crunched down into numbers and then uncrunched when it's at its recipient end, right? That's what's happened, happening when you take an image here and it crunches it down into a card and then you take that card and you put it into your laptop and it uncrunches it and boom, all because of ASCII. Thank you, ASCII. And the, the, the funky thing about the space, okay, when you actually hit the space bar, it's negative information is what it is. And most of the time, ASCII reads right over it, it's not a problem. You got your file name, it's okay. But that's why we put underscores in our, in our titles instead of a space, okay? Don't put spaces in your titles. Every once in a while it'll mess it up and I guarantee you the one time it does, it's the time you need it the most. Reback up your folder, all right? Replacing the old folder on the redundant drive. This is why the redundant drive is so important because you've got the original images but now they have names. You've gone through every single one of your images and you've renamed them. Now is when you can replace the stuff on the original drive. Go through them, make sure they're good. Drop them on the drive and make sure that if, as long as they're good then on the second drive then you can erase all the other stuff. You don't want to have too much stuff backing up, it's going to confuse you. But when they're named, you'll easily be able to find them. Number six, create an edits folder. All right. Um, however it's best named by you, you're the one who is going to access it. So you're the one who should name it, right? Whatever's important to you. Zelda 5000, I don't care what you come up with. Uh, what, you know, 
Uh, I'm very basic. I'm not very artistic in the way that I save my stuff. So it's like, edit folder one. Final edits. Final edits two, because my first stuff was crap. Stuff like that. Continue to back up this folder as your edits continue. And we'll talk about that during the editing week. Um, all right. Don't save any ad additional information on the redundant drives. The redundant drive, which is over here, my imaginary little, I don't know why I picked this little space, but that's where my redundant drive exists in my memory. Uh, there's nothing that ever should be extra on this one that you don't have here. Because you're not using that one to do your edits. If you ever, like, switch those and, like, edit on this one, and you're, like, fully intentional, I'm totally going to back that up on the other drive, you know, it's not convenient right now to use the other drive, but I'm going to use this drive, right? You will forget and then eventually you're going to replace it with another, with another backup, right? I promise you, you will do. So those are your eight steps. Questions? <laughs> Questions? Are you finally done? <laughs> yes. I'm finally done talking about that. It's a little bland. I get it. It'll make sense later. Know it. Learn it. Live it. Okay. Talked about lead lines. Why is this doing this? I thought I corrected that. Um, all right. I'm going to, um, I want everybody to read this, and then I want you to be, uh, just pick your table as a group. If you want to be in a different table, there's like a lot of people in that one, and there's like three in this one, right? So I want you to get in groups of like four, 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 one, two, three, four. There's other, other, uh, somebody transplant over here, okay? I don't care who it is. But um, I want you to talk about this as it relates to the images for assignment, for our assignment for, for today, for Wednesday. The assignment is listed. All right, Merle. All right. We did talk a lot today about lead lines. We also covered exposure in recent days. Uh, I want whoever Collins with and Miss Miss Fang to really feel like I have to memorize your name. Right? What is it again? Are you talking about me? Yeah, Julia. Julia, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I'm pretty good with names, though, right? I mean, I haven't really screwed up that bad so far. Um, it's because you came in late. I know. That's what it was. We didn't develop the things. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, we also started to, to discuss organization. You don't really have to implement that for your assignment. But what I do want you to do is take a few correctly exposed images. Right? Again, it's not wrong if you like overexpose something for an artistic flair. But for our purposes, I just want it to be correctly exposed. Right? Um, <laughs> take a few correctly exposed images. Um, Back it all up on two different drives. I know that not everybody in here has two, you know, one terabyte drives just like hanging around in their backpack. All right, I, I get it. What I want, you, th this is not an exercise in how much money you can spend on a drive. This is an exercise in putting it in two places. You guys get that, right? What might two places be? Dropbox. Dropbox. And on the hard drive. Or? Dropbox is on a hard drive. I'm oh, sorry, flash drive. Flash drive is on a hard drive. What is it? Like Google Drive thing. The Google Drive, right? Multiple computers. Multiple computers would work as well. I don't have, I, I really won't have any way of checking up on you. I just want you to do it. I want you to do it because going through the motions of doing it will get you in the habit of, like, first of all, it'll, that's what it is, right? You've probably maybe never done that before. I don't know. Maybe you have. In which case, refresher course. If you haven't done it, you need to at least go through the motions of doing it so that you have done it for this class. It is really important. Back it up in two different places. Uh, part two. Part three, name them. What did you shoot? Maybe the, maybe the subject is the most important thing for you. When did you shoot it? Maybe that's most important. Whatever. However you want to name it. No spaces. Back them up again, all right? Yes, I want you to back it up and then back it up again. Yes, clarify that people are like, you want, us, you want me to back it up twice and then name it and then back it up again. 
Yes. Can you answer your question? Yes, I do. All right. All of this, okay, when you shoot the image, I want you to be using lead lines to accentuate your subject. I, I want lead lines. There was a really awesome example of lead lines. Some good ones in that building, too. I love that one. The, the, the pool cube, yeah, of, of the 500 that you just saw swipe past you. Um, where'd it go? Mm. Oh, there. We finally got the Jeep. Yay. That's the one leather seat. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's the one. Whose is this? Mine. Yeah. I like this. Uh, I especially like this one. How cool is that? What is it? Exactly. But it's cool. <laughs> You're looking up at the side of the back end of the IMRC, right? Yeah. Looking straight up at the sky. Right? Yeah. Creativity at its best. That is pretty cool. Oh no. Okay. Oh. Wait. So we go way back down there again. I want to talk to you about these, Wayne. These are good. I loved her sketches. Look at this. She sketched it, and boom. That's cool. Image personified. Look at that. Right at the top. Knew exactly what she wanted. Went and grabbed it. <clears throat> this one right here. All right. And you guys look at this. She cropped the bike out. Oh, I need to crawl, but it's not a picture. What the crap? <laughs> Who doesn't like that image? I hate that image. That's rude. Isn't it awesome, though? It actually draws something from you. You're looking at it, you're like, oh, can you please put it in the frame? <laughs> right? If it actually makes you do that, that's an awesome image. Right? It's uncomfortable to look at it. Like, where's the rest of the bike? It's, it doesn't satisfy me. I want more. It's like a horror movie, you know? And everybody dies, and you're on your... You just got, like... You got hope that, like, one of them in the woods survives, but no, they get, like... They get it worst at the end, and you're just like, oh, that's so unsatisfying. <laughs> that's what this image does. It's perfect. Right? It draws something out. So horror movies that do that are good? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. You leave completely... Yeah. Like I want my life back. That's what that shot does, and it's great. You can you can do a lot with this shot too. You can um, what she did here was she tried to make it look small against a big wall, right? But I really really like this one. I mean I hate it, but I, I like it. <laughs> Just, it makes you want more. That's what a good shot does, doesn't it? It makes you want more of it. Anyway, I got sidetracked. What the hell was I? This refresh, this constant, endless refresh page thing. Wish I could just get rid of it. No, I missed it. Where was I? I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, the back of the building. Just go down and check it out. Check out uh, Thomas's. Um, Looking down the rails, oh, here we go. Looking down the rail, he's, he's got, it isn't necessarily one image. It's the, it's the essence of all of them. Together, am I wrong in saying that they are greater than the sum of their individual parts, right? As you look at these images, they come together to provide you with the story of the back rail in the building, right? Like, how is that even possible? But he accomplished it with this. He's got... Shallow depth of field here, keeping your eyes off this. Your eyes don't want to stay here, do they? They want to come right down here. I want to go here, and I can't. <laughs> right? 
I want to go here, but again, I've got to stay over here. He's got not just the focus, but the lead lines that keep your eyes down here. When you have this internal struggle with your eyes, that's like, that's the doge. You know what I mean? That's the good stuff. That, he, he's used focus as well as lead lines. I mean, we all know what the railing of stairs look like, right? So even if he just, even if he came over here and he could barely tell what that was, you would still know it's railing, and even the implied line there is a lead line. Like, he doesn't even have, an, have to have an actual line right here because it's a rail, we all know what a rail is, and that keeps us down here too. Does anybody find this frustrating? You should, a little bit. You should find this a little bit like, and, and no, for our purposes in here, I want you to put a subject right here. Or right here. He didn't. And it works here because you're like, I'm supposed to be looking, I don't want to look down here, there's nothing here, but your eyes have to go there. Right? And I'm just like, my eyes are stuck in this void. I'm like, no. And there's like this internal struggle that exists between your eyeballs, like your brain doesn't want to digest the information that your eyes are feeding it. Right? It's telling a story. I want your next assignment to have a subject here at the end of those lead lines. Here at the end of those lead lines. Please do uh, feel free to use a shallow or, or wide depth of field as you see fit. Looking up from the rail, right? Looking below the rail. He's like, he stepped back. He looked up. He looked down. He looked close. All right, that's what I want you guys to start doing. It's a very successful set of four images. I, I love them. I, and and, and I, I like that they came together, even though I, my eyes don't want to do anything with this. All right, I want you to put a subject there. This is like, like, like Wang's picture. You, you want fulfillment from an image that's not given to you here. I want you to fulfill your, 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 your image for this assignment, but this is effective. I want to point that out, Wang's picture, uh, and, this, and this set of pictures here. Yep. All right, get in your, uh, get in your tables. What? I have just one quick thing. I just, just to like, give context, this, this, I, take, I took like four out of these out of um, 53. So 53? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a good selection. All right, uh, your assignments are listed on the assignments page, which I'm looking at right now, but I for some reason can't find the end of it. Here we go. I want you to read this stuff here. Don't forget to put your goals in for the assignments today. Big red lettering. All right. Our next project is your project, or what is the group for? No, I want you to discuss what? I want you to discuss lead lines. Uh, I want to get you guys talking. And for for the class, for our for technically our purposes, uh, we're done. But I do want you guys to spend the rest of the class period, at least uh, ten minutes, just throwing ideas, volley your creativity back and forth. I promise it'll spiral into something positive. All right. Tristan, you want to hit the, all the lights for me, please, sir? Please and thank you. Yeah, I want you to. Yeah, I want you to put a subject yeah, at the end. Can you switch out? So like, I like yeah. 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 I don't want you to limit yourself on the subject. Yeah. 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 Yeah.